Leoncio Sanchez was one of the most influential people in the capital. He lived in his townhouse in the city center and was very lonely. However, he would never admit that even to himself. Leoncio was always busy, negotiations, business trips, and meetings, he never had time to stop and think. He confidently and decisively flew through life like an arrow aimed at a target. Sanchez was envied and looked up to. He was invited to television shows, interviewed, everyone wanted to know the secret of his success. And Leoncio willingly shared his time management and business strategies, but no one could get close to him or rise as high as the 45-year-old bachelor millionaire Sanchez. This minor inconvenience occurred when Leoncio returned from Switzerland and stopped by home to change. His faithful maid, Teresa, who had been conscientiously cleaning his house for over eight years, handed in her resignation. I'm sorry, Senor Sanchez, but the kids want to get away from the noise of the capital and move closer to the sea. So, they're taking me with them. I'm very sorry to leave such a place, and I've grown accustomed to you and attached, like to a son, but there's nothing to be done. I really want to spoil my grandchildren soon, and my daughter-in-law is pregnant. Leoncio just frowned in response. Always these family circumstances. In his opinion, family and other attachments only added troubles to the orderly and thoughtful life he had so skillfully constructed. Yes, the millionaire often behaved like a machine rather than a human, but in the world of big business, there was no other way. You either move forward, regardless of everything, or lose everything. He generously paid Teresa and called his secretary to arrange for a new maid, stating the requirement that she be unmarried and childless. It would be perfect if you could find me some plain mouse, Sylvia, he told his secretary. Someone who stays home in the evenings and isn't too attractive to men. That kind will stick around for a long time. Understood, Senor Sanchez, Sylvia replied. I'll do my best. The next day, Leoncio saw her for the first time. She really looked very modest, a gray, slightly worn sweater, a black skirt below the knees, chestnut hair tied back in a simple ponytail, blue eyes hiding behind glasses. On her feet, rough old-fashioned boots. She speaks softly and shyly, constantly fiddling with the strap of her bag. Just what I need, thought Sanchez contentedly. As always, Sylvia is spot on. And where did she dig her up? It feels like this girl was standing in a museum as an ancient exhibit yesterday. What's your name? The millionaire addressed the new maid. Blanca, she answered quietly, afraid to look him in the eyes. Excellent, Blanca, nodded Leoncio. You'll come every morning, even when I'm not here, and clean up. The bedding needs to be changed every other day. Make sure to dust the plants and the glasses in the glass cabinets daily. At the end of the cleaning, you need to put on white socks and walk through all the rooms. If the socks remain white, you've done the job perfectly and can go home. If not, please redo the floors. Is that clear to you? Blanca nodded obediently and barely audibly replied, Yes, Senor Sanchez. Is she really this quiet or is she pretending? Leoncio doubted. She needs to be tested. When the girl left, he walked into his office and opened both safes he had. Transferring the money from one to the other, he opened one of the bundles and took out a dozen large bills, which he carelessly tossed into the empty safe. Then he closed the first one, leaving the second one slightly ajar, enough to be noticeable. Let's see if she's as modest as she seems at first glance, Leoncio thought smugly and turned on the surveillance camera. The next day he packed his suitcase and flew out on another business trip. Leoncio returned after two days. Upon entering the house, he immediately noticed a pleasant fragrance in the hall. He walked through the rooms, everything was clean and tidy, not a speck of dust, not a single crumb on the floor. Leoncio decided to take a relaxing bath first. The bathroom was also sparkling clean. On the table were unpacked shampoo, shaving cream, and a new toothpaste. Leoncio admired the maid's care. He hadn't mentioned anything to her about buying personal hygiene products. Apparently, she noticed they were running out. 
After bathing, he put on his favorite dark blue terry cloth robe and soft slippers and went to his office. So far, I'm pleased, but let's see what the video shows, Leoncio muttered aloud. Of course, he was tired after the flight, but he had a habit of making decisions as soon as possible. If she didn't take anything from the safe, I'll have no more questions about her candidacy, the millionaire thought to himself. He turned on the TV screen and displayed the image of the room. Rewinding the video to the desired moment, he fast-forwarded it, sat on the couch, and started watching. The spectacle was not too exciting. There was the maid entering the office in her black uniform with a white apron and starting to clean. She neatly stacked the papers and folders scattered on the desk, mopped the floor, dusted the secretaries, bookshelves, and safes. Leoncio yawned and fast-forwarded the video to the appearance of Blanca the next day. It all repeated again. The same boring actions, which almost put Leoncio to sleep. However, this time the maid walked across the floor in white socks with a serious and even tense look, which amused Sanchez. He was about to turn off the video, satisfied that the maid hadn't touched his money, when suddenly, on the video, Blanca entered his office again. She was already wearing her street clothes, the same gray sweater and wide dark blue jeans. She stood in the middle of the office for a while, as if hesitating. Leoncio leaned forward, watching the screen intently. What was she going to do? Finally, determination appeared on Blanca's face. She approached the bookshelves and picked up a book. The millionaire stood up from the couch to see better. Was she going to borrow something from his home library? She really is a bookworm, Leoncio thought with a laugh. His surprise was immense when he saw that Blanca wasn't holding a book at all but his old photo album. Leoncio couldn't believe his eyes. Why did she need his photographs? In amazement, he watched as the girl hastily flipped through the pages on the video, stopped at one, and pulled out a photograph. Then she looked around sneakily and quickly tucked it into her pocket. Leoncio Sanchez was consumed by anger. Could this girl really be a journalist? A paparazzi who had deceitfully infiltrated his home? So that's why she wanted to appear so modest. The millionaire turned off the video and rushed to the bookshelf. Finding the album, he angrily flipped through the pages. All the photos were in place except one. Leoncio Sanchez tiredly sat on the couch, dropping the album straight to the floor and stared blankly ahead for a long time. He wasn't thinking of anything, not recalling anything, but his heart was painfully gripped by what seemed like long-forgotten bitterness and disappointment. Leoncio didn't know how long he sat there, motionless. His strange trance was broken by the loud tickings of the clock. The millionaire stood up, brushed aside strands of damp hair fallen on his face, and calmly left the office. Tomorrow, he would instruct Sylvia to arrange a meeting with the new maid in his office. And right now, he only knew one thing, he needed to rest to feel his best the next day. He had a difficult conversation ahead. The next morning, Leoncio Sanchez woke up ten minutes before the alarm. It was a habit he had developed over the years. He got up, took a shower, brewed some coffee. After drinking it, he dressed and headed to the office. Sylvia, as usual, greeted him in the reception area. She was wearing a red suit, and the tall, slender blonde looked as striking as ever. She rightfully considered herself the face of the company. Good morning, Mr. Sanchez, the girl said cheerfully. How was your trip? Excellent. As always, Leoncio replied briskly. Sylvia, I have a request for you. What is it, sir? Call the new maid. Have her come here, to the office. I need to talk to her. When? The sooner, the better. All right, Mr. Sanchez. I'll call right away. Leoncio nodded to Sylvia and disappeared into his office. An hour later, Blanca timidly knocked on his door. Come in, he heard. Leoncio Sanchez, frowning, crossed his arms over his chest as the girl awkwardly entered and sat across from him. So, Leoncio said rather sharply, Confess. Which newspaper do you work for? Blanca raised her eyebrows in astonishment and looked at the millionaire with confusion. 
I don't understand what you're talking about, she stammered. But I believe you understand perfectly well, Sanchez replied in an uncompromising tone. I saw everything. There was a camera in the office. Blanca paled and lowered her gaze. There was silence in the office for some time. You mean the photograph I took from the album? The girl whispered finally. Exactly, Leoncio said. He was angry and irritated. How skillfully she pretends to be an innocent lamb, he thought to himself. Blanca looked up at him again with her blue eyes. Yes, I took it, but I swear, I don't work for a newspaper and I didn't intend to publish it. There was sincerity in her tone that struck the man. Either she's a good actress or she's telling the truth, he thought fleetingly. Then why did you take the photograph? And why? He paused, as if gathering strength, and finished the sentence, this one. Blanca's chin trembled betrayingly. She was barely holding back tears. Mr. Sanchez, I took this picture because it shows you with my mother. Those words sounded like thunder in clear skies. Leoncio Sanchez literally lost his ability to speak upon hearing them. What did you say? He asked hesitantly. Could he have misheard? In the photograph I took from your album, my mother, the girl repeated quietly. Lured, your mother, he asked, still unable to believe that this was all happening to him in reality. Blanca nodded. But how is this possible? It can't be a coincidence. Blanca looked him in the eyes and nodded again. Of course not, she replied disdainfully. I knew from the beginning what kind of scoundrel I was getting involved with by taking this job. Leoncio Sanchez was stunned. He suspected that Blanca was simply playing the role of a modest and quiet girl, but he never imagined she was capable of hurling insults directly at him. How dare you, he erupted, regaining some composure. You stole something that belongs to me, and now you allow yourself to make such statements. How dare you? Blanca calmly and coldly met his gaze. I stole one thing from you, but you stole everything from my mother, she unexpectedly exclaimed. Leoncio's heart squeezed with pain. Me? I stole? She betrayed me herself. Blanca narrowed her eyes and proudly lifted her chin. What are you talking about? My mother is not capable of such things. But Leoncio Sanchez no longer heard her words. Memories of distant days, which he had long suppressed, trying to erase from his memory, burst free and now surged onto the man with furious force. He closed his eyes and involuntarily transported himself 22 years back. Back then, Leoncio had just graduated from university and was actively searching for his first job. He came from an ordinary family with no connections to rely on. Sanchez already knew then that he should rely only on himself. He walked into company offices and personally handed his resume to the secretaries of the bosses. Lord was the assistant to the director of one of the promising firms engaged in logistics. When Leoncio first looked into her blue eyes, he felt as if he had been struck by lightning. He was so taken with this slim, red-haired girl. The young man understood that asking for a number was too bold, but at the same time, he felt that he wouldn't get another chance. So, blushing and stuttering, he dared to suggest meeting her for lunch. Lourdes, with a condescending look, glanced at his worn-out suit but agreed. They met the next day, and Leoncio took Lourdes to a restaurant that was clearly beyond his means. However, he felt that she deserved to dine only there, so he decisively spent his last money on fine wine and expensive dishes. Lourdes was impressed. It seemed she had never been to such places before just like Leoncio himself. Later, they laughed a lot, remembering the pompous rich people at neighboring tables. The first date was followed by the second, third, fourth. Leoncio and Lourdes enjoyed each other's company. They had plenty to talk about, and they were surprised to find that they often understood each other with just a half word. Gradually, the young man realized that he couldn't imagine his life without Lourdes and decided to introduce her to his parents. Leoncio was very nervous, but his anxiety turned out to be groundless. The family dinner went perfectly. The atmosphere was warm and pleasant. Mom and Dad looked at Lourdes with admiring glances, and Leoncio felt pride and joy. 
That evening, he confessed his love to the girl for the first time. They stood on the veranda, the evening was warm, and the stars shone above them. Leoncio felt that there was no one happier in the world than him. He and Lourdes tightly held hands, then he leaned towards her ear and whispered, I want you to be my wife. Lourdes laughed and whispered back, But you haven't met my family yet. What if you change your mind? But the young man shook his head. Not for anything. They kissed under the stars for a long time, and then the parents called them to taste mom's chocolate cake. The next weekend, Lourdes invited Leoncio to her house. Now it's my turn to introduce you to my parents, she declared. Leoncio was nervous again, naturally, even more than the first time. He spent a long time choosing a shirt, then carefully ironed it, but it still seemed wrinkled to him. Finally, he got ready and left the house. Lourdes' parents lived a few blocks away from him, so Leoncio decided to walk. On the way, he bought flowers and chocolate for Lourdes, her mother, and her younger sister. The young man tried to remember her name, but he couldn't in conversations. Lourdes always called her little sister Dragonfly. Just outside the house, her name finally surfaced in his memories Federica. Lourdes had mentioned once that her younger sister was named after their grandfather. Leoncio knocked on the door. It swung open, revealing a red-haired girl who looked about 14. Hi, Federica, the young man said cheerfully. I'm Leoncio, your sister's friend. He expected the girl to smile at him, but she only furrowed her brow and muttered something incomprehensible before disappearing. Shrugging, Leoncio entered the spacious corridor. The Lurds family was not poor, they lived in a large mansion where there was plenty of room for everyone. A few moments later, Lurge descended the stairs. She wore a lovely red dress with a deep neckline and a beautiful pearl necklace. She had her hair pinned up at the back, adorned with a shiny hairpin. Oh, I see, Dragonfly has let you in already, she exclaimed joyfully upon seeing Leoncio. Yes, and then promptly vanished, he admitted with a laugh. That's her style, Lourdes laughed. She took the flowers and chocolates. Let's go to the living room, our parents are already waiting for us there, Lourdes said. Leoncio took a deep breath and followed the girl. Lourdes' parents turned out to be very nice people and excellent conversationalists. They asked Leoncio about his work, and he willingly shared the latest news. He had managed to get a job at a good company that dealt with investments. We're so happy for you, Leoncio, Lurds' mom said. Our daughter said you were looking for quite some time, and unfortunately, her company rejected your application. Yes, that's true, but I'm not upset about it. The Lurds company has given me a treasure that turned out to be much more valuable than any of their positions, Leoncio replied, smiling gently at his girlfriend. She smiled back at him. Federica, however, grimaced at the sight. She hastily stuffed everything on her plate into her mouth and, without thanking anyone, went to her room. Federica clearly doesn't like me, Leoncio whispered to Lourdes. She just waved her hand in response. Don't pay attention to her, darling. She's always like that. Leoncio wanted to believe her, but something told him that Lourdes was wrong. Apart from Federica's provocative behavior, the evening was a great success. When Leoncio kissed Lurds goodbye and left the house, he felt great. The worry of the past few days had receded, and he was happy that the challenging moments were behind him. Now he could calmly propose to Lurds and prepare for the wedding. With his new job, he could afford a larger apartment where they both would feel cozy and comfortable. With these optimistic thoughts, Leoncio returned home, took a shower, and peacefully fell asleep. Everything was turning out just as he had planned, even better. An old university friend who had become a real estate agent found him a beautiful apartment in the city center overlooking a beautiful park. Leoncio went to see it alone. He wanted to surprise Lourdes. He walked through the bright rooms, trying to imagine Lourdes' reaction, and it seemed to him that he couldn't find anything better. The apartment seemed to be made for the two of them. Without any further doubt, Leoncio made the deposit. Then he went downtown to buy a ring for Lourdes. 
He pondered over options for a long time until he settled on a delicate and very elegant ring adorned with a pale blue topaz. Just like the color of her eyes, he thought. He bought the ring on credit, intending to pay for it with his next paycheck. Now it's just left to propose to Lourdes. Leoncio carefully considered the details for a long time. He wanted everything to be very beautiful and romantic. While walking through the center, he noticed a small but cozy restaurant where a violinist was playing. He entered and ordered a cup of coffee. The waiter brought Leoncio his order, and the young man sat for a long time, listening to the musician. Dreams took him somewhere far away. He imagined walking through life hand in hand with Lourdes and how she would become his only destiny. They would have children, then grandchildren, and they would spend their old age in a little house by the lake somewhere outside the city. Leoncio even shed a tear. He envisioned it all so vividly. Then he got up, paid for the coffee, and firmly decided to return here with Lourdes and propose to her to the beautiful sounds of the violin. It happened the following week, and everything went perfectly. Lourdes suspected nothing. She was more beautiful than ever. Her pink dress accentuated her fragility and tenderness. She curled and let her hair loose, and they cascaded in beautiful waves down her shoulders and back. Leoncio felt like everyone around was only looking at Lourdes, and he felt proud that this girl would soon be his wife. Leoncio felt like the luckiest and happiest person on earth. He was beside a beautiful woman, and things at work were going better than ever. It was like a fairy tale. When the violinist played one of the most poignant and tender melodies, Leoncio got down on one knee and proposed to Lourdes. She couldn't hold back her tears. Everyone around applauded. Will you marry me? Leoncio asked Lourdes, looking at her with eyes shining with anticipation of happiness. Yes, the girl replied. Yes, I will. The guests applauded the beautiful couple once again. Leoncio lifted Lourdes up and twirled her around to the beautiful sounds of the violin. When they sat down at the table, a gray-haired man with long mustaches approached them. He wore an old-fashioned checkered jacket and trousers with pleats. You're a very beautiful couple, and I'm a retired photographer, he said softly. It sounds strange, but it happens. I got so tired of photographing endless and monotonous weddings that five years ago I swore I wouldn't take another photo. But you've inspired me. There's so much love emanating from you. So, allow me to take just one photo. Lourdes smiled and nodded. Leoncio sat next to her and hugged his beloved, and the man took their picture. A couple of days later, he sent a copy of the photo to Sanchez's office. Leoncio carefully tucked it into his planner to show Lord later. The wedding was scheduled for the end of April. There was just over a month left to prepare. However, life intervened in the lovers' perfect plans. One morning, Leoncio came to work and saw a note from his boss asking him to come to his office. Surprised and somewhat nervous, Sanchez immediately went to the chief's office. On the way, he pondered why the boss needed to see him. He really hoped he wouldn't be fired for some unknown reason. After all, the wedding was just around the corner and moving to a new apartment. Losing his job now would be unthinkable. However, Leoncio's fears were unfounded. He immediately noticed that the boss was in a good mood. He greeted him warmly with a friendly smile. I have news for you, Sanchez, said the boss. And I hope you'll be as pleased with it as I am. Leoncio smiled. I certainly hope so too. The boss gestured to the chair opposite him and the young man sat down. The thing is, continued the boss, we're opening our first overseas branch. Oh, congratulations. Leoncio said sincerely. I wonder what I have to do with this, he thought to himself. And you have a direct role to play in this, said the boss, as if reading his thoughts. Me? Sanchez was surprised. You excelled at university, your diploma speaks for itself. You have excellent reviews from your professors. You've also proven yourself to be a young but very promising specialist here. We need people like you. That's why I've decided to appoint you as the manager of the branch that is about to open in. He didn't manage to finish his sentence because the agitated Leoncio interrupted him. 
I'm very flattered, sir. But does this mean I'll have to relocate? The boss raised an eyebrow. Is that a problem for you? Leoncio hesitated for a few minutes before responding. The thing is, sir, I'm getting married soon. How soon, the boss asked, scrutinizing the young man. In a month. The boss cleared his throat and adjusted the already perfectly arranged papers on the table. I'm sorry, Leoncio. But this is a very important step for the company. I didn't just choose you randomly. I believe you have a great future ahead. If you lead our branch, you'll be on a path that many aspire to. But not everyone gets such a chance. Consider yourself very lucky. Leoncio nervously adjusted his tie as if it were choking him. But what about the wedding? Invitations have already been sent out and postpone it for a short while. You'll go, settle in, then come back, have your wedding, and take your wife with you. It's simple. Leoncio still had doubts. Tell me, what's bothering you? The boss began to lose patience. Leoncio looked him in the eye. I'm very worried that Lord. What about Lord? Can't she wait? The boss smirked sarcastically. Sanchez nodded awkwardly. The boss stood up and began to pace nervously around the room. What kind of love is it if the girl can't wait a couple of months? And why do you need such a wife? Leoncio understood that the boss's words were more than fair, but something inside him clenched at the thought of postponing the wedding and leaving Lord here. Or do you want to be henpecked? The boss continued to protest. Your fate is at stake right now. Not just yours, but your entire future families. Doesn't she want to live decently? And for your children not to need anything? Remember my words, you'll be a millionaire in no time. Do you want to miss such an opportunity? The boss's arguments sounded more than convincing, and Leoncio reluctantly agreed. Back in his office, he could barely wait for the end of the workday. In the evening, he and Lourd agreed to have dinner together. He bought a bouquet of crimson roses and hurried to the restaurant, which was a few blocks away from the office. He arrived first, Lourd had written that she would be a little late. Leoncio sat at the table and rehearsed the speech he was going to say to his beloved for the hundredth time. He had never been so nervous before, and his heart. His heart ached and didn't want to go anywhere. Finally, Lourdes appeared. She was wearing a striking dark blue dress with an open neckline. A silver bracelet sparkled beautifully on her wrist. She had swept her hair to one side and wore long silver earrings. All the men turned to look at her as she walked to the table where Leoncio was waiting for her. How can I leave her alone and go, he thought jealously as he rose. Sorry, dear, got stuck in traffic, Lourdes chirped, hugging him. He handed her a bouquet. So beautiful. Thank you, darling, the girl smiled. Leoncio helped her sit, then sat himself and cleared his throat. He knew he was about to ruin Lord mood but he couldn't hold it in any longer. I need to tell you something, he said with a voice unfamiliar to him, trembling with nerves. Lourdes instantly sensed his state, and the smile faded from her face. What happened? The girl asked, concerned. Leoncio recounted the details of his conversation with his boss, carefully observing his beloved's reaction. Lourdes paled, but quickly composed herself. Of course, I'm upset that we'll have to postpone the wedding. But career prospects are very important for you, for us. And our future family. Your boss is right. Leoncio couldn't believe his ears. He knew Lourdes was sensible and rational, but he didn't expect her to accept this news so quickly and without much emotion. What if she doesn't love me at all, he briefly thought, but he quickly pushed away his doubts. Thank you, my love, he said. I'm so glad you understand the importance of what's happening. Did you think I would make a scene over a couple of months delay? Lourdes laughed. Leoncio laughed too, feeling surprisingly relieved. Yes, that's exactly what I thought. And I also don't have the money to pay for all the dishes you broke in this restaurant. The rest of the evening went perfectly, and the next day Leoncio began to prepare for his trip. Their meetings with Lourdes became even more tender. 
Both felt that the separation was approaching with each passing hour. On the day before his departure, Lourd came to Leoncio. They sat on the couch and turned on some movie, but both were too distracted to follow the plot. Leoncio breathed in the scent of Lourd perfume, wanting to memorize every detail. The girl held on to her beloved. Tightly. Around midnight, Leoncio said he would call a taxi, but Lourd shook her head. Tonight, I want to stay with you. Leoncio's heart jumped in his chest. Are you sure? I thought you wanted to wait until the wedding. Lourd nodded decisively. Yes, I'm sure. Tonight, I want to be with you. Early in the morning, Lourd left. Leoncio asked her not to see him off at the airport. He knew saying goodbye there would be even harder. He didn't want to leave her crying among a crowd of strangers. As they said goodbye at the doorstep, both couldn't hold back their tears. I'll write as soon as I land, Leoncio whispered. Lourd nodded. I'll be waiting, she said. I love you. I love you too. And I already miss you. When Leoncio closed the door, he suddenly felt very scared. For a moment, he thought they might never see each other again. He wanted to rush out of the apartment and chase after the girl, but he restrained himself. That would look more than foolish. They had already decided everything. He didn't know that Lourdes was also standing behind the door, pressing her hands to her chest, but hesitating to knock. The new country greeted Leoncio more than warmly. Everyone treated him with respect, which amazed the young man. He himself felt very young and inexperienced. At first, it was difficult for him to adapt to the new life, but gradually, the young man began to get used to it, and it became easier for him to fulfill his obligations. Every day he called and wrote messages to Lourdes. Time flew by quickly, and the lovers eagerly awaited their meeting. Leoncio had already bought the ticket. They only had to wait two more weeks. That evening, Leoncio called Lourdes as usual, but her phone was switched off. Strange, he thought. That had never happened before. The young man called back an hour later, but the result was the same. He called Lourdes all evening, but she remained unreachable. And the next day, a message came. Forgive me, Leoncio. I met another man and fell in love with him, the young man read. He almost dropped the phone, his hands trembled so much. He quickly dialed Lord number again, but she didn't pick up. Don't call me anymore, she wrote a minute later. Leoncio barely restrained himself from smashing the phone against the wall. How could she? After all the words she said to him. And he. He, like a fool, was waiting for their meeting. And she just betrayed him. Leoncio threw himself on the bed and, unable to hold back, burst into tears. By evening, he had a fever. He called the office and said he wouldn't be able to come to work tomorrow. He slept through the entire next day. The fever subsided, but Leoncio couldn't get up and make himself do anything. He just wanted to forget. Fortunately, the next day was Saturday, and he didn't have to go to the office. Leoncio spent the whole day lying in bed again. He hardly ate anything. On Sunday, he got into the car provided by the company and drove out of town. He wandered through the surrounding fields for a long time, trying not to think about anything. But he couldn't erase lurid image from his memory. The girl stood before his mental eyes as if alive. However much Leoncio tried, he couldn't help but feel love for her. I must let her go, he said aloud. She chose someone else. Returning home, Sanchez returned the ticket, took a bath, and shaved, determined to start a new life without Lourdes. He blocked her number to stop checking incoming calls and messages every minute. On Monday, the young man went to work, and the familiar life once again swept him into the whirlpool of events. Leoncio tried not to remember the past and not to think about the future. All he had left was the present, and he was ready to act and make the most of everything it could offer him. He succeeded in everything he undertook, and with each success, he reached higher peaks. Eventually, Leoncio Sanchez left the company that had opened up so many opportunities for him, returned to his homeland, and started his own business. 
Luck favored him in everything, his business brought in more and more money, and one day Leoncio became one of the most successful and wealthy people in the country. So, what do you think my mother did? Sanchez heard the question, which seemed to carry an arctic chill. He blinked, pushing away the memories, and focused on Blanca's face. She looked at him hostilely. She found someone else two weeks before the wedding. Isn't that enough? He said angrily. The blank expression on her face ignited as she looked at the millionaire in astonishment. What are you talking about? She stammered, bewildered. Leoncio stood up from the table and turned away to the window. Long forgotten feelings of resentment, powerlessness, and despair surged back into him with renewed force. So, she kept this from me, the man bitterly uttered. Blanca remained silent, casting her eyes down. She no longer felt hatred towards the millionaire. Something about the man's posture and the tone of his voice made her reconsider her opinion of him. I don't know anything about it, but I'm sure it's a mistake, she whispered. After all, my mother was already pregnant with me two weeks before your wedding. Leoncio felt like he misheard. He turned to the girl, staring at her incredulously. What? But that can't be. Blanca bit her lip, tears welling up in her eyes. My mother told me that you spent the night together before your departure. That's how I came into existence, she said softly. Leoncio nervously ran his hand through his hair and sat down. Then he closed his eyes, pain contorting his features. Is it true? He asked, without lifting his gaze. Just don't lie to me. Please. I know what people are capable of for money. He looked at Blanca. She was as pale as a sheet. I know you don't believe me, she murmured. But I want to get to the bottom of this myself. I always dreamed of seeing my father, of feeling what it's like to be a beloved daughter. I've always been deprived of that. My mother said my father died. But one day, I found her diary and learned everything. Leoncio looked at Blanca, unsure whether to believe her or not, but his heart squeezed in response to her words. He no longer saw her as a brazen hypocrite, no. There was something in her eyes that made her seem fragile and vulnerable. He wanted to embrace her like his own daughter, to stroke her hair for a long time, soothing her worries and instilling confidence in her for tomorrow. I think only one person can give us the right answer. It's Lourdes, the man finally said decisively. But she doesn't know I'm here, the girl said, frightened. I got a job with you without her knowledge. She, she doesn't think highly of you. I've heard her say many times that you're a coward and a scoundrel when she saw you on TV. Leoncio flared up. So that's what Lurch thinks of me, he bitterly thought to himself. Then he stood up decisively and, circling the table, extended his hand to Blanca. Let's go, senorita. We need to resolve this as quickly as possible. Your mother will have to give us an answer. They left the office, descended in the elevator, and got into an expensive car driven by an elderly chauffeur. Where to, Mr. Sanchez, he asked Leoncio, who nodded at Blanca. The girl gave the address, and the car set off. On the way, Leoncio and Blanca remained silent. Finally, the car stopped in front of a rather affluent house. The man and the girl got out of the car. Is Lurd's home? Leoncio asked anxiously. Yes, she's working remotely, Blanca replied. Leoncio hesitated. Perhaps it's worth warning her not to catch her off guard? But Blanca shook her head. No, let's just do it now so she has no way to retreat. Sanchez nervously swallowed. Blanca took out a key from her purse and opened the door. They entered the bright hallway. Mom, it's me. Blanca called out. Is everything okay? Leoncio heard a painfully familiar voice coming from somewhere very close. He suppressed the urge to rush into the adjacent room and embrace Lurds. Yes, but I'm not alone. I have a guest with me, and he wants to see you, Blanca declared. Who is it? The woman replied, and Leoncio heard the sound of a chair being pushed back. In a moment, Lourdes appeared at the threshold. She was wearing an elegant dark green dress and a white cardigan. 
Her hair was shorter than in her youth, but still the same shade of red. It cascaded in voluminous waves over her shoulders. Lourdes' gaze remained unchanged. Leoncio once again saw the same blue, mischievous eyes of the young woman he still couldn't forget. However, when Lourdes realized who stood before her, shock flickered in her eyes. She anxiously covered her mouth with her hand. Hello, Lourdes, Leoncio murmured softly. His hands trembled, his heart pounded desperately in his chest. What are you doing here? Lourdes asked harshly, finally regaining her composure. She crossed her arms and looked at the man with hostility and coldness. I came to find out the truth, Leoncio admitted. What truth are you interested in? Lourdes retorted. At that moment, Blanca intervened in the conversation. Mom, are we just going to stand in the doorway? Let's go into the room. Lourdes shifted her gaze to Blanca, and her facial expression softened slightly. She silently turned and headed into the living room, with Leoncio following her and Blanca bringing up the rear. As everyone sat down, there was a palpable tension in the room. Sensing it, Blanca decided she was unnecessary here. As soon as the girl left, Leoncio couldn't hold back and spoke as if all those years hadn't passed. Why are you angry with me? It was you, not me, who didn't answer my calls and then wrote that you met someone else and fell in love. Lord raised her eyebrows in astonishment. What? I never wrote that, she exclaimed. I was pregnant and waiting for you to tell you about it in person, not over the phone. And you just disappeared. And blocked my number. Are you saying I made it all up? Leoncio replied in the same tone. Lourdes looked at him with confusion. Then her eyes clouded over for a moment, as if she was trying to remember something. Wait. Before that happened, I lost my phone. I was sure it was on my nightstand, but it wasn't there. And the next day, I found it under my pillow. It was very strange. I never put it there, but I was so glad to find it that I didn't think much of it. I thought I'd see a bunch of missed calls and messages from you, but the phone was empty. So I called myself, only to hear that my number was blocked. I sat on the bed feeling out of sorts when my sister walked into the room. She asked me how I was doing, and I complained that I couldn't reach you on the phone. He probably found someone else, Federica shrugged indifferently and left the room. With these words, Lourdes helplessly shrugged her shoulders and cast her gaze down. And you believed her? Leoncio guessed. But Streak never liked me from the start. She probably didn't want us to get married. I wouldn't be surprised if I found out she took your phone and wrote those messages. Lord flared up but couldn't retort. She's always been a rebel. And yes, she was against the wedding. She was jealous of me being with you, the woman confessed and suddenly burst into tears. What's wrong with you? Leoncio trembled. He wanted to hold Lord close and never let go. Streak ran away from home when she turned 18. We don't know where she is, if she's alive. Our parents nearly went mad with worry. It undermined their health. I'm sorry, Lourdes, Leoncio whispered. He hesitantly stood up and approached. Then he sat down on the couch next to the woman and gently hugged her, fearing she might push him away. But Lourdes, on the contrary, leaned into him and cried even harder. So they sat, embraced, until the woman calmed down. So, Blanca is my daughter? Leoncio dared to ask. Lourdes just nodded in response. I'm sorry it all turned out this way, Sanchez said bitterly. I'm sorry I didn't see her being born and growing up. He lowered his head, feeling the pain of emptiness and loss. Lourdes gently ran her hand through his hair. But you're here now. Yes, you can't change the past, but you have the present. Now, when Blanca has found you, she needs you more than ever. The millionaire lifted his head decisively, and I'll be there. Then he looked at Lourdes with tenderness. And you, do you need me? Lourdes smiled and nodded in response. Yes, I do. I never could forget you, Leoncio. Sanchez. Hearing this, the man felt like the luckiest person on earth. 
He held tight to the only woman he ever loved and, for the first time in 22 years, allowed himself to dream of a beautiful future. And now he was sure his dreams were destined to come true. Dear viewers, If you enjoyed the story, please support the video by liking it and leaving a comment. Thank you very much.